This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk about a very common task that a lot of editors have to do on a daily basis but sometimes it's a little bit tricky to figure out how exactly the best way to go about doing it is and I'm talking about either recording scratch VOs or to be perfectly honest you could be recording final VOs directly into your Avid editing system if you want to. Now, this tutorial comes directly from a post that I saw on the Avid Editors of Facebook page with someone asking this exact question. Now, I happen to have a USB microphone attached to my system right now, which is how I'm speaking to you, and in this lesson, I'm going to show you two different ways inside a Media Composer that you can get these voiceovers in. One is if you happen to have tons and tons and tons of dialogue that you're just going to have someone or even yourself in a booth recording that you're going to be dropping into your timeline afterwards. And the other technique I'm going to show you is one where you can record the voiceover live directly to your timeline. Both techniques, very useful. In the end, you can choose which one works best for you. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And once we're in Media Composer and assuming that you have your USB microphone hooked up to your system, you're going to want to make sure that Media Composer actually sees it before you get rolling. The easiest way to do that is to head over to your settings. I'm gonna to come to the audio project. You'll notice that we have a few tabs here. For us, most importantly, it's the input tab. Once I select the input tab, you'll see for the input source, we have the default, the host 1394. But for me, the most important option is my AT Audio Technica 2020 USB microphone. There we go. Okay. Now you'll see that we can get in and adjust some levels if we want to, but I'm actually just going to leave everything the way that it is for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come and let's open a bin here. I'm just going to choose appropriately enough the voiceovers bin. And let's call up the digitize tool. I'm going to hit command or control seven on the keyboard, depending on what system you're on. Now, in most cases, by default, your capture tool will be set up like you see right here. Now, because we don't have a deck that we're going to be capturing to, this is why you saw it originally. We had the source toggled to be a free run using our time of day. In this case, it's about 1030 at night. Yes, that's when I record my tutorials at about 1030 at night. But this is giving us a live running of the time of day time code for us to record to. Now, because inside of my audio settings, I set my audio to be coming from the Audio-Technica 2020 USB microphone, that's why it's selected right here. Now, I'm just gonna turn on my audio meters here. There we go, let's just move the audio tool over here like such. Now, something that's important to keep in mind, and this is something I've noticed when trying to do a, a record through the capture tool, and that is, is that you cannot hear yourself through Media Composer. Well, it's not that you can't hear yourself. It's that if you're listening to yourself while you're recording, you're going to hear your own voice slightly delayed. You're not hearing a real-time uh, real time update of your voice being captured. Now, the only way to really hear yourself as you're recording is if you had an external, let's say a USB hub that you were going into, uh, that you could plug headphones into and then listen to before it actually got to the system. What you're actually listening to is what is being recorded after you have spoken. Now, to be honest, all I do is really turn the volume down so I don't have to hear it as I'm recording because, to be honest, I know what my voice sounds like. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up here, what I'm going to do is just turn one of the audio channels on channels like such. On like now, such. as soon now, as, as I soon do as that, I I'm just going to turn the volume turn down, the here. Volume there down here. There we go. Because as soon as I because did as soon that, as I, could I, did that I could immediately hear my own voice again, slightly delayed through my headphones. 
Now again, you'll see that as I'm talking, we have our audio meters bumping up and down there, showing me that the audio is coming through into the system. Now, something that I should point out that's very important, you'll notice that as I'm speaking, my audio levels are going through the roof. Now, you'll remember that when I was back in the audio project settings, if I head back to the input, let me just call up the audio tool. I'm just going to bring it over a little bit here just so that it's not going to be constantly covered up by our project window here. And as I speak, if I grab the input levels and I start dragging them down a little bit, you'll notice that this adjusts the input level of my microphone, which is exactly what I want to do. Now, you'll notice that as I click and drag, I don't get a real-time update, but that's okay because once I let go, you'll now see that I get a real-time preview of exactly where my audio levels are going, and they're peaking somewhere around minus 10, which is pretty good for the purposes of what we want to do. Now, what I'm going to do is once we're all set to start recording, all I'm going to do is simply head up here. Now, I could punch in a name for my clip if I want. Let's actually just do that. I'm just going to call this Voice Over Clip one okay and you'll see that i'm going to my media drive which has an absolute ton of disk space to record voiceovers i'm just going to hit record here and i'm going to start speaking now you'll see that i also assigned a tape name to my voiceover track because media composer always likes to have tape names no matter what you're doing and i'm just recording i'm just talking and when it's done i'm going to hit stop and then i'll have a clip that's in my bin now of course if you have multiple bins open you'll want to select the bin that you're recording to but I'm pretty happy with what I've recorded up till now, so I'm simply going to stop recording. Now, once I do, the clip immediately appears in my bin. Let's just close the capture tool here. I'm just gonna bring that clip up here. I'm gonna drop it into a new timeline, and you'll see that as soon as I turn the audio waveforms on, here's the clip that I just recorded. Now, I'm just gonna turn my volume up here just so that I can hear it a little bit here, and here we go. I hit record here. Very, and very nice. Start speaking. Now, you'll see that I, I feel like I'm having a bit of deja vu. Name to my voiceover track because Media Composer always likes to have tape names. Okay, and that's basically how we're going to record. Again, like I said before, just giving it a little bit of thought beforehand. Maybe you need to, like again, like I said, you have 40 pages of dialogue that you just want to record just to get everything into the system. So maybe you're working on a documentary so you can drop things in as you need to drop them in. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this clip here and we're going to delete the sequence as well because I have another example of where you would want to record a voiceover but in this case we're going to record it live on the fly okay and let's just get everything set up here and you'll see that I have a little timeline set up nothing too fancy just of some guys on a basketball court playing basketball now please ignore the giant sink jump that we have here where our basketball player in the red shirt is running up to make the slam dunk and we cut to the guy in the gray shirt here. It's no problem whatsoever. We cut back to the guy in red, back to the guy in gray, but we're not gonna worry about that for right now, okay? The only thing that we're gonna worry about is getting this voiceover in. Now, to get this voiceover in, what we're going to use is the audio punch-in tool. That can be found inside the tools dropdown. I'm gonna come up to tools, and I'm gonna come down to audio punch-in, okay? Now, again, we're gonna call up our VU meters. Everything's pretty much all set to go, so I don't really need to concern myself too much with the volume because, again, like I said, we'd set that up when we were recording in the capture tool. Now, there's a few options that we are going to want to get in and set. Obviously, the input source is selected for us. Which track do we want to record to? Now, in this case, because I already have an audio track that I'd like to put this on, I'm just gonna choose audio one. If I wanted to have it create a new track while I was going, I could simply select new track and have it go to as many input tracks as I want. Now again, the drive it's gonna be recording to, the bin it's going to be saving that clip into, and one of my favorite features is you can actually get in and add some pre and post roll here. And I'm gonna set the post roll to be zero because I'm gonna stop the record long before we get to the end. But the pre-roll option is great because what it will do is it will add, in this case, two seconds of pre-roll before we get to the first frame of picture to give yourself a little bit of leeway so you can be ready to start recording. Now, I don't have a script pre-planned. I'm just going to record something on the fly here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to navigate up to the record button. And as soon as I hit record, you're going to see that we're going to get some filler put in off the top. Two seconds. The sequence is going to start playing and it's going to be ready for me to start recording. Here we go. I'm just going to hit record. Here we go. And now you can see that we have our video here. And I love the fact that it gave me 
A couple seconds of pre-roll here to prep myself, and as you can see, we have a great game of one-on-one -on -one going. Oh, great slam dunk there. Great hang off the rim, drop down, and no matter who wins, everyone's friends in the end. Some great sportsmanship, you know, some great camaraderie there. And we are just about done. There we go. Okay, so there's the voiceover immediately dropped into my timeline. What I'm going to do is come right back to the beginning here. I'm going to hit play now. And now you can see that we have our video here. And I love the fact that it gave... And me there we go. You can see that our voiceover was recorded directly into our timeline. And take a look at that. I thought it was actually going to drop that audio in beforehand, but it didn't. It actually started the audio recording exactly right at the start of our timeline, which is fantastic. I love this because, again, it's just a way to keep things nice and clean when you're working in your timeline. All right. So I hope this lesson has shown you how you can get in record voiceovers quite easily, no matter what the situation you might be in. Again, if you need to record a ton of dialogue, use the capture tool. If you want to get in and you want to record just specific voiceovers for exactly what's happening on the screen, definitely get in and utilize the audio punching tool. It's a fantastic tool. Again, a very underutilized tool that not a lot of editors realize is even there. But when you see how it works, it's just a very handy one to have at your disposal whenever you need it. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.